everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Hmm. It has been a hot minute since I, since I made a podcast. There's many updates in my reality that I'm excited to share with you, and so much upgrading that is happening that I am excited to download into your vibration because it is getting juicy up in here. Expansion is happening. <sighs> and I feel like we all constantly need these reminders that we're in on this together, that it's all happening for us, that we are just on this beautiful journey of expansion and playing the game of life in the way that feels the most yummy in our bodies. So in on that note, <laughs> I did a play party last weekend. It went really well. Um, honestly, before the play party, I was like, not sure if I really wanted to do one just because I, why didn't I want to do one? I was just processing a lot of emotions like, and I wasn't sure if I was in a state where I myself was feeling like sensual or sexual. And you know, like, I don't know if this happens to you, but for me, sometimes I have it where I am doing something long enough where I'm not sure if I'm actually making the impact that I feel I'm meant to make in the world. So I will do something and it's working and people like it and, you know, it's helping people. And then I go through this kind of like cycles with myself where I'm like, am I actually meant to be doing so this? Am I meant to be doing something bigger than this? And <laughs> uh You'll notice if you ever listen to my podcast about how I travel to 70 countries that I have done a lot of things in my life because for me, it is one big game with myself of how much impact can I make in the world while also growing my soul, while also for me, myself, expanding into the highest timeline that is Brittany Bond's life. Um, so for the play parties, I had gone, I was going through the cycle of like, Am I actually making the impact that I'm meant to make in the world by doing this? Uh, is there something else I could be doing? And uh, many people were asking me to do a party. And so I said, okay, I'll do one more. I'll see what happens. And, and then, of course, as it always does, it was so beautiful, so dropped in, such community vibes. It was really helping a lot of people. People told me it really changed their life. And... It ignited again in me this activation of, okay, this is part of my soul mission. I'm meant to help people, help help them drop into their bodies, help them to deprogram anything that they have that's negative beliefs around their sexuality, and also to orient ourselves from a place of pleasure in our bodies. This is our natural orientation as humans, especially women. <sighs> and to guide people, I jokingly call it pleasure school, to guide them through this process where they are able to release any negative beliefs that they have and do it in from a place of connecting as a community. Because for me, I am all about tribalism. I really believe that we are meant to go back to the way we used to be of being dropped in as a tribe and feeling like it doesn't actually matter what we're doing because we're doing it together. That is the most important thing. <sighs> and that's what I accomplished on this. And so that was beautiful. And then this week, I am been in a mode where I have opening myself up to receiving a villa, another villa, a new villa that is uh, more matching the vibration that I'm currently expanding into and also able to make more of an impact in my community here in person on the island, uh, which has been such a beautiful exploration because... Um, Basically, my landlord told me that I they they need to fix the roof. There's stuff that is just every year during rainy season the roof leaks on my on my villa here. And uh, in order to really do the remodeling that they want to do and upgrade the house, they need me to move out. Well, I always tell them, "Can you can I please keep living here?" You know, like it's been this negotiation back and forth for the last couple of years. And finally, they're like, "Okay, we really want to do some hardcore upgrading." So we need you to move out for a certain time period. And, you know, I've had a lot of beautiful experiences in this home. I've had it for four years now or longer. And I've gone through, I call it two and a half major relationships, uh, two partnerships here and another one where we were casual, but um, it just kind of evolved into something more serious. And um, anyway, so two and a half relationships here and 
I kind of just feel like I'm ready for new energy. Not kind of, I am. I'm ready for new energy. I'm ready to expand more. I'm ready for new, 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 new versions of myself because every container that you're in, every house that you're in carries the energy and carries the memories and your body somatically responds to the things that have happened in that home. And so for me, it's a time of expansion, moving up and out, onwards and upwards. And so that's, that's I'm choosing to use this as an opportunity to expand. Maybe I will take over this house again after they remodel it, have it for the community, maybe not. I'm open to whatever is meant for me. And yeah, so I've been exploring lots of villas here on the island and they're so beautiful. Wow, like this is like, you know, we really, we really have, we really have made it here on the island. Um, and I'm just excited for whatever is coming my way and there's many options for me, so I'm allowing myself to be intuitively guided to whichever one is going to be the right vibrational match and also one that I can help make the most impact for my community through the, the setting of the house or where it's located. Or th There's many factors that I'm not going to go into, but these are things that are occupying my psyche right now, and also I'm leaning into using it as an opportunity. Everything's an opportunity for us to allow ourselves to be guided, allow ourselves to feel this connection to source, allow ourselves to really step into bigger and bigger forms of abundance because our soul has this, you know, before you come into your physical body, before you come down into this dimension, your soul has a timeline, like it has a lifetime where if you are in your, your highest timeline where you are not in fear, you're in love, like you're in, you're choosing the vibration of love and you're choosing the vibration of I am divinely guided, I am supported, everything's happening for me, and you're fearlessly going out and doing the things that you're intuitively guided to do, this is what we call living your highest timeline. So this is the timeline, this is the lifetime that your soul has guided you to, to experience all the things that you're meant to experience, to have all of the soul lessons, and to enjoy, and to j have the best time, to enjoy this beautiful game of life. Most people will never get to what their their highest timeline is because they're in so much fear, because they don't believe in themselves, because they have negative beliefs that are preventing them from allowing themselves to receive the intuitive guidance and to act on the intuitive guidance that their soul is giving them. So for me, I, the, for me, it's a constant game with myself and the universe of okay, where am I guided to be? What is meant for me? What is the highest timeline for me? And also through, I could because I know within myself, through my me living my highest lifetime, like what is meant for me from my soul is also going to create the most impact in the world and also going to make the most beautiful changes that I know that I'm here to make for our reality, for our tribe, for our new earth community. Um, and so... I'm here for all of it. <laughs> and um, I think it's really important to say that, like, none of us have it all figured out, you know? Like, especially this expansion mode of, like, stepping into the unknown of, like, you know, this house that I've lived in here has been this anchor point for me while I've traveled all over the world and also built my community here. This has been an anchor. This has been my earth base in this 3d reality and to understand that okay the universe has me expanding into a bigger one um one that it will make more impact one that will match my vibration on a higher level it is it feels the best way that i can describe is is it feels like i am stepping off of the ledge and knowing that the next step is going to come but you're literally stepping into the unknown and, and they call it going into the void and that's really beautiful and it's also fucking terrifying sometimes because the known reality is safest for our 3D minds. Our 3D physical minds are here to keep us safe, literally keep our bodies physically safe in our timelines, in our lifetimes. And when we are stepping into the unknown, there is this, you know, red flag thing that goes off in our brains where it's like, is it safe? Are we actually meant to do this? Are we meant to, you know, we can just stay here, stay small. You know, like this is known, known quantity. We know that we are safe doing this. 
But when you trust the universe and you trust that it's all happening for you and that y by you stepping into this higher form of expansion for yourself, you can activate everyone around you to feel bold and to feel, to let go of the fear and to step into what their highest lifetime is that their soul has set out for them. That's really fucking beautiful. So I'm here for myself to be this example, this activation that it's okay to feel vulnerable about it and it's okay to not have it all figured out and it's also okay to trust and to know that I am always guided, always supported, everything's happening for me and that it's all working out for the best and that I am fully, fully supported by myself, by my higher self, by my community and that's really beautiful. I wanna share a story of some of my connections that I've had recently. Um, because right now I'm in this mode of like, like I've had, let me just break this down for you. I have had seven major relationships with men in my life, starting with the first man that I'm, the only man I've ever married when I was 18. But after that I've had, yeah, total seven major relationships. This is like where you know, we're traveling together, we have a home together, me and this man, whoever my partner is, a lot of times we're working on the business together or running a community together. It's like we are intricately entwined, we are co-creating, we are making magic in the world, and we are living our lives. And I've, I've really loved, you know, everything that we do is an opportunity for us to grow our souls, like our consciousness, for our consciousness to expand, right? Everyone does this in different ways, uh, in whatever way is the most exciting for you or whatever the way that you are pushing yourself to do. It can be a, an exciting thing or it can be a negative thing, but either way, your soul is going to grow. And so for me, I have chosen in my life in the past to grow my consciousness primarily through my relationships because I just love relationships. Like my Lilith is in Libra, if you know astrology, that just basically means like I love the idea of exploring how we connect to each other. And for me, when I learn this, not just about myself, but about my partner and my community, I also learn a lot of things that grow my consciousness. The, th <laughs> the juxtaposition here, the thing that I needed to pay attention to was that I had some negative beliefs about what it meant to be a woman in a relationship that was a blind spot for me that I really, really consciously looked at specifically after the last relationship that just ended. And what I noticed was that no matter how much fi uh, financial abundance I would make, no matter how much impact I would make in the world, community, connection, um, business growing, when I would get into a romantic dynamic, I would make myself smaller. I would lessen the impact I would make. I would make less money. And it's because I had this programming that my partner needed to take the lead in a way where like I needed to make myself smaller in order for them to be bigger. And this is just programming I had. I'm not going <laughs> to go into that or like s it's not a negative or positive. Everything is what it is. But for me, it was negative because it was holding me back from my highest potential of my highest timeline. So the relationship itself wasn't negative. It was how I chose to operate within the relationship and how my negative beliefs were affecting my expansion within that dynamic. Um, and also because of those negative beliefs, I was attracting in men into my life that were validating these dynamics and in their own way, encouraging me to stay smaller or to use my energy for them instead of use my energy to expand myself and my impact in the world. And this is, this is a very black and white thing I'm saying. I'm not saying this is like how it was in all the timelines and all the relationships, but I would say overall this is the essence of what carried through the similarities between all the relationships where I would put, I would have my track of what I was meant to do in the world, my soul mission, what I'm accomplishing, the money I'm making. I would be very set when I was single. And then when I get in a relationship, suddenly I would be doing, sometimes I would just stop the impact I was making in the world and start working on the, par the project that I was doing with my partner or the, the project he was doing. I would just start doing whatever he was doing, supporting whatever he was doing, or just you know, start asking him to take the lead on the business that I was running successfully, but suddenly just hand it over to him and have him take the lead on it. 
or give him the money that I was making. Like there was so much weird stuff that was happening. And I'm sharing this with you because I am a very powerful woman. I understand my power. I understand who I am in this timeline. I understand that I am this beacon of an example of a powerful woman. So it was very uh, humbling for me to admit this to myself, that this was a blind spot that I had. And also it activated a lot of anger that I had within myself about myself, that I was allowing myself to give up my power in relationships. And a lot of times the person wasn't even asking me to. It was just like this programming that I had that I would just do it, you know? Um, so all of that being said, now that I'm consciously aware of this and I have therapists and I have soul family and everyone is understanding that this is what Brittany is working through and she's releasing these negative beliefs. Everyone's holding me accountable. I'm holding myself accountable. I'm conscious of it. Anytime I get into a new dynamic with a man, I am very conscious of, am I giving my power away? Am I able to, is this person supporting me on my soul mission? Are they actively inspiring me to create more magic in the world? And basically, like, are they supporting me on the path that I'm already on? Not like, am I going to go on their path or am I slowing down on my own path? It's like, no, are they supporting me? Am I actually moving faster on my own path and with more joy and, you know, more acceleration? Because um, otherwise, I don't got time for this. You know, like right now is my time for Brittany Bond to rise up in the way that I can see in my visions. I can see in my meditations of what I am meant to create in the world. <coughs> the impact I'm meant to make, the financial abundance I'm meant to have, like it's time. And it's beautiful for me to step into this because this feels really empowering for me. So I'm in the sauna the other day. <laughs> I was telling you a story about a man. Ah, the stories, such funny stories. So I'm in the sauna the other day. I've been bringing my book into the sauna. I think I said this in a little previous podcast. And so I'm like reading my book, minding my own business. I'm very much in like what I call mission mode these days where like I wake up like this morning and I recorded a whole course uh, about feminine empowerment and feeling juicy and yummy in your body. And I've just been feeling so much power and creating so much in the 3D from this power, right? And so when I go out into the world, I'm not really in a mode of connecting, like my energy is not in a mode of being ex open to new connections. I guess that's the best way I can put it. Like I'm like head down, doing my thing, connecting to my soul tribe, building, 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 building. Like in startup world, we call this, you know, you're in launch phase. Like you're launching something new into the world. And so you're head down, focusing on it. If we want to say it from a feminine, feminine perspective, I am birthing something new into the world and I do not have energy to share with other people. I'm just, I'm in my cocoon, my little butterfly cocoon, and I'm birthing things. Anyway, so I'm in the sauna and suddenly someone starts talking to me and I'm like, who's talking to me, <laughs> you know? Um, because like in my island, in my island, in the island here, I know a lot of people. I know most people that live here. And so, and most people know me, and so they just are like, you know, they can just tell if Brittany's in her mode, she doesn't want to talk, it's fine. Like we all, we live, it's like a tribe here, it's like a fucking village. So you're not gonna wanna say hi to everyone all the time, every single day. You are you have to allow yourself the space to feel internal, external, and we all kind of honor this within ourselves. So this guy starts talking to me, and I, he's just like, hey, how are you doing? What's up? What are you reading? But then we end up having like a really good conversation and like my energy was like, oh, I, I would keep talking to this person. Like I was surprised that I was excited to have a further connection with him. And so we go out of the sauna and um, we start talking, but then some other friends come and everyone gets, gets in this like group dynamic. And I'm, again, I'm more internal these days. So I just didn't feel like engaging and I got up and I went about my day. I went home and did most things. And I just said to myself, I was like, if I'm meant to hang out with this person, like, it will happen. It will flow into my dynamic, right? Like, it'll flow into my vortex. So the next morning, I'm at the coffee shop with two of my friends. And we're just having, like, a morning drink. And I'm going to go to the gym afterwards. And I'm just, again, in my mission mode. But also just enjoying my life, hanging out with my soul family. And it starts raining. And then this guy, like, pulls over. 
like I don't think he was meant to go to the coffee shop, but he was pulled over to get out of the rain and he immediately sees me and he's like, Hey, how are you? And I'm like, Hi, how are you doing? And so he I invite him to come sit down and then like the four of us, him and I and two of our my friends, we all start talking. I introduce him to them. Everyone's having a really great conversation. My two friends leave and him and I end up staying there and talking for like another two hours. And just really great conversation, connecting, talking about our soul missions, what we're accomplishing. You know, we both um, went through a breakup recently and it's just like what we are focusing on, like up leveling ourselves, learning, growing, taking the lessons, being grateful for what we can from our last relationships, letting the rest of it go, you know, all the things. And the energy between us felt very expansive, supportive and nourishing for me. Also, he's very beautiful. <laughs> like, wow. Uh, his eyes, like, um, tall, dark, and handsome. Definitely my type. So, um, then we end up um, hanging out. Like, he ends up, like, asking me out on a date. And I said, yeah, okay. So, I we go on a date, and I just said to him, like, very clearly, I was like, you know that I just got out of a breakup. I'm not someone who goes from relationship to relationship. I like to what I call like debrief where I'm like, I'm really sitting with myself, learning the lessons, integrating. I'm not going to rush to the next relationship because for me, I feel like that's immature. I feel like there, there's something about honoring the grieving process if going through a major relationship and allowing yourself to just really feel all of the relationship, all of the energy and all the feelings that come from the death of this relationship. It's just like a grieving process of someone dying. You're like grieving the idea that you could have had this life with this person, especially if there's betrayal there and, and hurt and pain. It's like you got to give yourself space. You need to allow your body time to process that, catch up. And if you go into another dynamic immediately, I feel like that is band-aiding, like covering up the the beautiful process that you could have and all the lessons you could learn by just running into the next relationship because what ends up happening is you usually loop because you haven't given yourself the time to learn the lessons you're going to replay those lessons out in the next relationship i've done this in the past and this is why i've learned to give myself space so i, s I shared this all with him and i also said to him i was like you know what i have experienced all the pleasure and, you know, if I'm, if I'm having a, a, a nice connection with someone at the play party, there is this container of, like, what happens at the play party doesn't mean that you're going to have a connection with this person outside the play party, right? So, um, for me, that's a safe space to, like, really allow myself to fill up on my sensual energy, my sexual energy. But if I'm going on dates with someone, this is like, okay, we're exploring a possible relationship dynamic. So, this is would fall in the category of, like, I want to take it fucking slow. So this is what I said to him. And I was like, I really want to feel that whoever I'm dating next, that we're friends first, that I actually like really enjoy spending time with you. We can talk about emotionally deep things. We're on the same page of like where we're moving in the world. Our soul missions are aligned. Like I want to give my body time to feel safe and to really check in because in my last relationship, my partner said all the things, but my body never really felt safe. I didn't feel grounded in the dynamic that it was a healthy dynamic for me, a healthy container for my body. And I didn't give myself that space to really check in and honor that. So now I'm like giving myself all the space and it feels really good. So I share this with him and he's like, I totally honor that too. Um, you know, my last partnership her and I dated for three years and um he's just like I'm also processing a lot and like he asked me like what would you feel s what would feel safe for you to uh, like explore this with me and I just said well right now I don't really want it like especially because we have this known like he already told me like I think you're beautiful I would love to you know like I am physically attracted to you, of course. He's like, how, how, how could someone not be, you know? And I was like, thank you. Uh, so there was this established, like, we both had already told each other that we found each other physically attractive or romantically interested in each other. It's so It felt so, like, adulting, you know? Like, we are having a conscious conversation about us liking each other. And I said, I just want to take things really slow. And so, <laughs> and so we did. So, like, for a whole week... Um, this is like leading up to the play party last week. We would 
you know, we'd see each other at the gym and we would just motivate each other. Like, okay, this is what I'm working on today for like my 3d impact I'm making. What are you working on? And, and he would be so motivating for me to go and like do the things he was always like messaging me. Like, did you get, did you make your podcast? Did you, you know, work on your course today? Like I, I got your back. I'm motivating you. I'm inspiring. Like he's really was like this energy of like, you got this. And I loved it because he even said to me, he was like, you know, Brittany, you are so badass. Like, you don't, like, even if I'm not in your life, like, you don't need someone to tell you that you're amazing and powerful. Like, you already are all of these things. So, like, just do the thing, like, that you're meant to do. Like, shine your light in the world. Go for it. And, of course, I know all of this. And also, it's really beautiful to have it be externally reminded. This is what we're here for. Like, our... Our primary need as humans is to feel this sense of connection and this belonging and this like external reflection of, you know, someone rooting you on and supporting you and having your back. And so again, to go back to what I was saying earlier about like, if there were, is any men in my life, they need to be like adding to what I already have built in my life and in the form of energy support expansion and I really felt like this connection with this guy was doing that I felt like a lot more motivated I was already motivated but I felt like even more motivated and inspired and um, we would usually see each other at the gym in the morning and then we'd both go do our stuff throughout the day and then in the evening he would take me out on a date and I love and I just also something I recognized from previous relationships was Whoever I'm interested in, my friends need to like them. My soul family needs to approve of them. Because <laughs> in previous relationships, my soul family didn't like my partner. And my partner didn't make any effort to, you know, be close to my soul family. And for me, this is a big red flag. Because these are people who have already earned the right to my trust. They have shown up for me over the years. Like we are connected and I really value their opinion so I was introducing this man to my friends and getting their opinions and I was asking them how do you feel in your body when you're around this person like do you actually like them not like does he check all these boxes or da da, da but like energetically what is your intuitive thing saying about this person and everyone liked him um so that was good so I felt like I was like really going through the motions of you know, taking it slow and, and also like honoring the things that I'd learned from previous relationships, um, about giving myself space. Is this person actually adding to my life? Do my soul family like him? (laughs) You know, like, because for me, it's like, if we're going to merge lives eventually, whenever that is, like, we need to all like each other and mix together because I'm not going to compartmentalize my friends with my partner, which is what happened in my last relationship. And for me, that is compartmentalizing parts of myself, which I refuse to do. It's below my standard, let's put it that way. So, um, it was just really interesting for me to explore this dynamic because it's the first time where I felt that I was dating someone and he even said he was like, I wanna create an emotional container between us where, you know, we are only like putting our energy into each other like one person he's like I only do one person at a time like I'm not gonna be interested in you and also talking to other women and I asked that you if you if this is okay with you to not do the same and I was like I barely have space for one man in my life like I'm focusing on me fully so for me this this is actually and also this creates a lot of safety for me because in my last partnership oh my gosh the sexual energy was so all over the place with my partner where he was just it did not feel safe around other women with him because he didn't understand how to control his own energy in a way that was honoring me. So for this, it was very healing for me, for him to take the lead on creating emotional safety for me and to focus on putting the energy into each other and ourselves, of course, but like just being like, let's hold this container to explore whatever it is, even if we end up being friends, even if nothing happens physically, or if we start dating, whatever it is, let's just hold this container. And if anything comes up with other people, we talk about it because the main thing is that we're on the same team and that we're creating safety for each other. And I was like, yes, this is what I've been preaching. Like, hello, someone who is actually living, not just saying all the things, but actually in their embodied presence, living the value system of what I also live. Like it felt like so much alignment, right? 
And there was, you know, he was sharing that like there was a woman that he that was interested in him um, from before we were connecting. And so he and I said, do you want to explore things with her? Like I'm <laughs> again, because we hadn't done anything physical, like I was less emotionally attached to the outcome. So I was just like, if that's something that you want to do, then go explore things with her. And he was like, no, I, d I don't want to. Thank you. Um, and he just said it was really nice for him. It was healing for him to bring up to me when there was connections with other people or possible connections because in his past relationship, anytime he brought this up with his partner, she would just get really upset and freak out. And it's just like it wasn't a safe space to even bring up, hey, someone else is interested in me. I want to just share this with you and let you know so that there is a safe container between us. And I was like, oh, this creates safety for me. I'm really happy. Like, I am, it's very normal for me to have many men coming up to me and wanting to be with me. And usually the partners that I end up picking, it's very normal that a lot of women, you know, we're, we are attractive people. People want to be in our energy. That's beautiful. And also it's how we navigate that in a way that is creating safety for us within our container. So... That was really beautiful. And then um, someone that I connected with when I was in Portland, the guy that I shared about in previous podcasts, really still love. I have a lot of love for this man. Um, I mean, he's in Portland and I'm here. So let's see what happens there. But uh, I hadn't really been, I, in my mind, I had just left it like whatever is happening is happening and let's explore it when it like actually comes through, you know, like we're friends who love each other, blah, blah, blah. So we hadn't really been talking. And then he started, this guy in Portland started messaging me and was like, I, um, I had a dream about you that we got married and kind of like, let's uh, kind of like, let's, and maybe we should just do that. Maybe we should just get married. Like, ha ha. And I was just like, <laughs> this happens to me a lot where men, I've been proposed to a lot in my life. I think part of this is because I have been married for six years and I understand what it's like to be like a really good partner. And like I've been a wifey, you know, like I understand what it's like to be in a long term relationship where you're committed and you're on the same team and you show up for each other. Like this is the energy that I carry. And I think for a lot of men, when they first experience this energy in me, they're like, whoa, you know, it activates their divine masculine. And then they're like, I want to marry you. Let's let's get married and have babies. And I'm like, slow down. <laughs> so I've been proposed to like six times in my life. And what it, how it normally starts is someone joking about it. And then they're actually just checking the vibe to see if I am interested. And if I am interested, then it gets more serious. And, um, but the thing is with the guy in Portland, like we've only hung out for two weekends, you know? So I'm like, there's no way that either of us have enough lived experience with each other to understand whether we are compatible for <laughs> marriage <laughs> within two weekends. And there's also just like not enough touch points or information. So for me, it's like, it felt like infatuation. It felt like, you know, people a lot of times put me on a pedestal of what they think I am and who they am. They love the idea of me, but maybe not the reality of me. Like, I am a human being who also has flaws and traumas, and I'm figuring it out just like everyone else. So whenever someone is, like, that quickly, like, hey, let's get married, I'm like, red flag. But also, I still have a lot of love for this man. So, and he, he kept wanting to get on a video call with me and, like, talk about things and just catch up and stuff. So I ended up doing that call with him. And I said to him very clearly, I was like, you live on one side of the world. I live on the other side. I do not do long distance relationships. So for me, it's like, let's just be friends who have a lot of love for each other until something further develops, you know? So um, I just left it at that. And, but I felt like I wanted to talk to this guy here in Copenhagen that I was connecting with and, and be honest with him about like, hey, I, this is someone I was connecting with before and you know, <laughs> he asked me jokingly to marry him and also just like just to keep the container safe with between us and open and transparent. And again, what I find super fascinating about this guy here in Copenhagen is that we hadn't even kissed at this moment. So we're exploring this for a whole week within this container. And my, my girlfriend jokingly called it like 1950s style dating because all we had done is like hold hands and like we would stare at each other in the eyes, do eye gazing and just be like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. 
and you know like we were both like yeah it's gonna be really amazing when we make love for the first time because we're like building all of this sexual tension between us um so i let him know like hey i um i have something i want to share with you about another guy and he's like actually i have something also i want to share with you about someone so this is like last friday um you know i had amazing day like lots of things like doing human design readings and coaching and creating more stuff on my course and just moving things around in the 3d doing the play party prep like i was like on fire i felt like really like in my power and also these days i've been having like what i call more good days than bad days and recently has like since my last breakup it's been a lot of really dark emotional days of me just being a lot of shock pain processing and yeah just um, just really honoring that it has been a very painful time for me. And yeah, there's everything you can share on social media. These are usually the highlights. I try to be as authentic as possible. But sometimes, you know, like, there's days where I will just cry all day long. And it feels like depression. It feels like the world is ending. And I know, because uh, because I have been depressed in the past, I know that it passes. I know that it is actually what they call compression, where you're just going internal and you're allowing yourself to feel everything and process. And this is just part of being human. And also, the days where I am feeling good, I have been feeling so in my body, s almost like MDMA vibes, which is like really in tune with the divine flow and like feeling out every single moment where I'm meant to be and you know I have my things I would like to get done in the 3d but like let's flow through the day in a way where it feels really fun and really yummy and I'm like I'm like flirting with life I'm like enjoying myself and my body and the, the energy going through my body and I'm just sharing this radiant energy with everyone around me and it's just like expanding and feeling amazing and and these days are getting more and more prominent for me these days are i'm having more of these good days than i am bad days and that's when i know that things are <laughs> on the up which i am very grateful for because it's been a roller coaster um and although i know that i'm stepping in my power and i know this was the right decision and i know it's all like happening for me you're still allowed to have days where things suck. You're still allowed to have days where you feel like shit, you know? And it's in those moments that I actually find to be the biggest lessons for myself. If I am able to be gentle and kind to myself in those moments and really ask myself, what do I need? How can I show up for myself? How can I be nourishing for myself? Those are the times where I learn how to really step into my full power because it's really easy to say like everything's amazing when everything's amazing but is it easy to trust the universe and to be nice to yourself and to gen be gentle with yourself when everything doesn't feel amazing <laughs> you know like that's for me the real test are you still able to be in the knowingness that like yeah this really is feeling really shitty in my body right now okay what is there to learn what how can i show up for myself what do i need right now what are the lessons that i need to learn in order to upgrade because this is why i am being asked to slow down right now this is why the emotions are happening in my body so that i can become more in alignment with my true authentic self for me those are the real moments of opportunity for us to step into our power Anyways, I was having one of these days on Friday where I felt really on fire. Everything was amazing. And so we both said, okay, we have something we want to share with each other. And he asked me out for dinner. And so, you know, I put on like a really sexy outfit and I was feeling myself. And I went to dinner with him and I shared with him about the thing I just said about the guy in Portland. And he was like, okay, yeah. Like he just kind of like took it in stride. And I was like, yeah, okay, what did you have to share? Um... And then <laughs> this is where the story turns very abruptly in ways that I did not expect. Um, <laughs> my life is so funny. So um, then he says very quickly, he says this all very fast because he's worried that I think he's just it's hard for him to say this stuff because he's worried that he's going to hurt my feelings. He's like, I had a conversation with my ex-girlfriend this morning 
when we broke up, it was very dramatic and we ended it very abruptly and we blocked each other. And this morning was the first time where we reconnected in a way where we were both dropped into our hearts. And I feel that I w- he's like, I'm not sure if her and I are going to get together, but I feel like I want to hold the space in order to explore whether we have a chance to try again or whether we're going to close this in a way where it's honoring both of us. And in order for me to honor you, Brittany, I need to first off tell you exactly like right away when I find this out. And also he's like, I just don't think it's honoring you to go into any form of connection with you further without knowing whether this was properly closed out or not. And And he's like, and she's the last person that I slept with. And I don't see, he's like, I can't live in my integrity and open up anything sexual or romantic with you without knowing whether that's fully closed or not. Like, he's like, that's not fair to you. That's not fair to her. And like, I wouldn't be able to live with myself. (sighs) And I was like, okay. And he was just, and he was saying all this like really fast because he was nervous. And I said, okay, well, you need to do what you need to do, you know? And he's like, you're not angry? And I'm like, I said, I'm not, no, I'm like, you got to do, like, this is the human exploration. You got to do whatever is good for you. Like, one, I'm really happy that we didn't do anything physical because that means that, like, we have the potential to be friends after this. And two, like, I feel that you were as honest with me in the past as you were with yourself. So, like, for, for instance... I told him, it is done with me and my ex-boyfriend. Like, there is no way that that is ever going to happen again. And I can say that with full integrity. And that means that I am open to a new connection. He said the same thing about his ex, but he wasn't honest with himself about whether that was actually done, done. Like he hadn't been able to be fully transparent within himself. So he was as honest with me as he was with himself. And so I brought this up to him. I said, maybe that's an opportunity for you to do some more self-exploration so that in the future, you can be more honest with yourself and then show up with more integrity in your relationships. Because for me, it feels like the, r- the carpet just got pulled from underneath me where like we you were saying like I'm done and now you're not done and I'm like as the feminine this makes it so that it no longer feels safe to be dropped into a container where you're leading the way and holding the safe container for us emotionally because you're not aware of your emotional reality to the depths that I am like I am playing the game at this level with my emotional reality and you're not there because you're not able to be fully present with yourself you know on the flip side of that, there is a lot of healing that I feel. I said this time, I was like, I feel that you are showing up within this dynamic with your ex in a way that I honestly is so healing for me to witness a man hold space for the closure or the exploration of more with with the woman that they, he was in love with her for three years. You know, they traveled the world, they lived together, all these things. And for him to be like, I need to honor this. I need to honor her. I need to create the space to explore, even if this is just to beautifully close out, but like to honor all the things that we went through and who she is and how much I loved her. And I was like, wow, I wish, um, I really wish that my ex-boyfriend had done that. So I went home from that conversation and had a very big cry (laughs) about wow, I really, really wish that my ex-boyfriend had created the space for us to honor the closure of our relationship. And like, it was this vibrational marker of like, this is how a man shows up. Like, yeah, maybe he could have created a better container between him and I, but also maybe this is instinctually why both of us were going so slow to make sure that there was a safe container for us to explore And I'm happy that this happened within a week of us exploring that dynamic and before we did anything physical because (laughs) I was kind of joking. It felt like we were like dating, like (laughs) like a dating internship. Like we were doing all the things as if you were dating without having the physical connection initially. I mean, that was, we were planning to do that. But like to go really slow on that, it really helped us to look at all of our beliefs 
how we were showing up. There was things where both of us were getting triggered throughout the week, but because we didn't have all this like sexual energy exchange being charged or these fire like hormones that were being activated because we were physical with each other, we were able to talk about it in a way that was like dropped in and calm and like support each other. Okay, how can I show up for you next time in a situation like this? so that I can create more safety for you. This is the conversations we were having throughout the whole week, and it was so amazing for me and for him. So to have it, you know, this container be closed out, of course I felt sad about that. Of course I felt some rejection. And also, it was healing for me, because I was like, at least I'm attracting and men into my life where... You know, we all make mistakes. We're all figuring it out. We're all doing the best we can. But the point for me is to be as authentic as possible, to create as much safety as you can for the people you care about along the way while things are moving and shifting and the dynamic is, is constantly changing. This is just life, right? But like, are we allowing ourselves to show up in our most authentic, authentic place within all of that moving and shaking that's happening? And... I had a very good cry about like the fact that there are men in the world who are have the same values as me and show up in the world in the same way that I would and that would create safety for me because yeah like I just remember thinking like wow I just really wish that my ex had honored me in this way and had been emotionally mature enough to hold this container and just like you know like close it out before you start something with someone else this is like a this is from in my mind common sense uh and in some people's reality too much below their capacity this is what i'm realizing um someone told me the other day that if we believe someone is doing something hurtful or wrong or you know what we quote quote unquote wrong it's usually because of their own spiritual development because if they are spiritually awake and mature this creates the reality that, of course, I'm going to do what's m what is safe for other people. Of course, I'm going to create safety and show up in a way that's in my integrity. Because you realize that we're all connected and you realize that if I hurt you, I'm actually hurting myself. And when you are spiritually mature, you are grounded in your body, you're grounded in your values, and you're able to show up and allow that energy through your body in a way where it's creating more love in the world it's c connecting it's expansive and it's not just words it's actions it's consistent action over time it's how do you show up in each relationship in a way that is honoring yourself whoever you're involved with and you being in your full integrity <sighs> so yeah and then at the play, so basically how that is going now is he's exploring stuff with his ex. I'm giving him that space. I still see him at the gym, support each other the best way we can. And I just realized like, this is, I learned something through this and this was great. This is expansive for me. And it's also me honoring my standards of who I choose to be with, you know, cause I was really like, I'm happy that we took it slow. That was something that I, I wanted and I needed and I'm really grateful I did that because in the past I, I say I want that and then I don't, you know, like I, then my physical urges, my sexual energy sometimes takes the lead. And so I was really grateful for myself that I am growing. Brittany's leveling up. And the play party was really beautiful in the sense that I was connecting to men that were very spiritually mature, switched on, emotionally attentive and in tune. And I've had a lot of really beautiful connections with some of those men this week in ways where I am honoring what I need to do for myself first. So I wake up, I do my breath work, my meditation. I, you know, I work on my impact I'm doing in the world. I make podcasts. Um, I go do my 3D things, like pick, pick the villa that Brittany wants to live in next. And and then I go to the gym and then I, then the evenings for me is the time to connect. It's like go to the beach with beautiful friends or a new, a new love interest. But it's like in the container of Brittany's putting herself first right now. Actually, this should be my whole life, right? <laughs> but um, like I'm intentionally and consciously putting myself first, my needs first and what I am doing in the world. This is... This is the most important thing. 
And for me, that is really beautiful. So um, there's so much more I want to share. This is why, like, sometimes I don't make podcasts, and then I'm like, why have I not made a podcast in a while? I have so much to say. I could probably have, like, three more podcasts in me right now. So I'm going to make more. Um, Some announcements for you is that, yeah, I'm going to start... announcing the container for the feminine empowerment step into your full feminine power uh, course that I'm releasing soon uh, so it's going to be a community it's we're going to do it together it's like a three-week um, challenge like three-week container I don't really like the word challenge but it's like you see like three weeks of lessons and going together going through it together as a community upgrading expanding supporting each other all the beautiful things I'm also um, open to doing human design readings again. I'm going to um, put the link in. So if you want to book a reading, you can also reach out to me on Instagram if you have questions. I really get so nerdy about human design. I was just talking to a friend about yesterday. I was like, and then this thing and that thing. And I'm always like diving deeper into it. And how does it apply to our lives? And how can we step into our full power through the the permission slip that is human design i really love it so if you want a personal reading you can reach out to me and um, book through the link that's in the below and i'll probably do a play party again soon i really enjoyed them um and yeah just all the things you know keep doing you you're doing great i believe in you you got this everything that i've ever done in my life i have built myself through my community, through my own power, through the connections that I have, and through trusting that the universe always has my back. And I'm here to tell you that you can also have whatever dream life that you are desiring by allowing yourself to believe it is possible first and that you deserve it and that it's coming your way and it's happening for you. So, so much more I could say, but I'll leave you with that. Have a beautiful day.